Hello, everybody. Happy Labor Day weekend. Um, I've got some beautiful weather here in Vegas. It's about 6 p.m. Open up a soda. And just got out of the dime bin. So these comics, if you don't count, everything I show you today, if you don't count, and I didn't, I'm not going to show everything, obviously, but if you don't count the box, these comics cost me ten and a half cents each. Um, I could have probably spent longer there, but but didn't. Um, and also deciding just to do this outside, just try it out, you know, get in the weather. The wife and the kid are, are away, so I can uh, do silly YouTube videos like this. Uh, also, you know, um, I'm uh, telling you how great my weather is right now, and I know that Florida is getting hit by uh, Hurricane Dorian, so hope everyone out there is safe and um, you know, I know some of you are going to be streaming during this, uh, that some of, some, some of you comic community people are going to be uh, streaming during it. Hopefully you keep power and stuff. I'll go check these out after I'm done here. So, um, a lot of what this is, is just me filling runs, me just grabbing things that look cool. Cause again, they're a dime a piece and, uh, let's get into it. So I, anytime I see a max title, I will pick it up. And for the most part, you can get them in... In the dollar bins, I think probably Alias, number one, is the most expensive one. The first appearance of Jessica Jones, and it's Brian Michael Bendis. Um, another big book here in, in the Max world that you know, is, um, of course, Punisher. But those you could find pretty cheap uh, pretty often. And uh, Kevin uh, Smith's Dare. Oh, that's not Max. That's uh, Marvel Knights. So just going to show you some Alias. And besides that, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that... Um, from writers I'm not familiar with, Phantom X, Max, so um, this is not something I've read, but I will grab it and check it out, and as we get, you know, as I get earlier, earlier versions, I don't think I have number one, I think I have number three of this, I'll read them, or I'll just read them whenever I feel like it. Um, there are a lot of mini miniseries in Max, so you see uh, things like Zombie, and um, I'd actually never seen this, I don't think, Dr. Spectrum. So some of these, you never know why they're max titles. In general, there's not, like, there's not nudity, but there is, like, um, you know, it's, there's still a, a mature titles for adults kind of thing. Uh, and I'm into that, as you will see later on. I'm, uh, I don't necessarily want it, like, gratuitous, or we don't want it to be, I mean... We just, we're happy with this here, you know, so as long as it's done with taste. Uh, David Lampham did um, Terror, Inc., so that is something I'm in interested in reading. It's not something that people point out for him. Um, Lampham, of course, from uh, Stray Bullets, but the art in here is sort of, dr sort of grabbing me, and that's by um, Patrick Zercher. So the art's sort of grabbing me, and David Lampham's a great writer, so... You know, this is this might be a little bit of a hidden gem for me, and um, and then I thought I had variants, but it was Terror Inc. Apocalypse Soon. So limited series. I got one and three, so I can at least read number one. I can put that to the side, and I'm gonna guess that Apocalypse Soon is the second in that series. And you see Supreme. I see Supreme Powers everywhere. Hope I didn't double those up, but it happens. Um, just uh, you know. Uh, Probably Max's little brother, a few Marvel Knights books. I like the uh, I like District X. I don't didn't think I had any of these. Um, I have the beginning of the run, so to me it's pretty cool. Marvel Knights, a little bit of uh, into X Men lore there, and then we get to um, Max's predecessor, which is Epic Comics, and I'm not even sure if this is the yeah these are the Epic Comics. So uh, I've never even heard of the light, uh, the what is this? The light and darkness war. Uh, it looked pretty cool. I got like a, I got a, you know, a full beginning run here. These are out of order, of course. Um, the covers look interesting enough, you know. Uh, it it looks like a lot of the epic comics that I've had before. Now this was Marvels in the '80s. This was there. Um, this was their more mature reader run. Looks pretty good. So, I mean, if I got a whole run, six issues of, a, of an entire war, pretty excited about that. 
Um, oh, it's in, and it's a six issue limited series, so uh, it looked good to me. It was Epic Comics, and I'm theoretically trying to c collect all of those. See a lot of them in the dollar bins, so very happy with that. So uh, pull something cool like that. I mean, maybe it sucks when I read it, but uh, you know, when I get a full run and it's something older, I'm, I'm happy with that. And so writers I'm not super familiar with, but uh, that happens to me a lot. I'm not as smart as some of you guys are with the 80s stuff. Um, filled some holes with uh, the lost, what is that? Post-nuke dick, which is uh, funny, um, untamed. A lot of these are sort of silly. The covers are, are nicer covers, but... Um, I can't remember which one I read, Strike Force, I forget what his name was, not Law Dog, but that was sort of silly, but it was trying to be sort of a mature reader thing. Um, let's see, Law Dog, Heavy Hitters. This, some of this seems uh, reminiscent of, of what you see, what we're gonna see in a few years it, with Image, where it's just, you know, heavy guns, uh, violent, you know, violence, or at least not being afraid of violence. This is a Chuck Dixon book, so that's pretty cool. And Tom Vincent, here's art. Um, I mean, it looks like, looks like what we're going to get from Image, doesn't it? And uh, let's see, the these are all in the mid-80s, but I want to get a... I want to see an actual, for Law Dog here at least, I want to see an actual um, Dragon Lines that's coming. Uh, well, these are early 90s, so this looks like it's early 90s, so it's right in that image era, just like we, just like we uh, thought. Little Midnight Men, it's a lot of epic comics. I think some of these are really actually older than the mid-90s, so Chuck Dixon again. So we'll get a lot of, a lot of good, um, a lot of good stuff from Chuck Dixon. Um, he's pretty prolific though, right? So... This guy here is from 93. And this dragon. See, it's Epic Comics from there. This one is going to be a little older. This is from 85. And um, this actually didn't look that cool, I remember thinking. But it's from Claremont. So this is some Claremont work. I mean, actually, I take it back. It does look, looks all right to me. Um, heavy Hitters Annual. So who knows what's going to go on there. A bunch of... Uh, a bunch of short stories what is this off casts so not outcasts but off casts more epic comics so essentially i said i don't know these creators and oh geez that is that's 93 also so it's funny because i mean this is right in the thick of the stuff that was happening with with image and stuff, but you don't hear a lot about Epic Comics. And I'm not sure why, probably because most of these suck, but they look cool to me and they have a little bit of history. And they are uh, essentially uh, Max's earlier father of Marvel's try at more mature reader stuff. Um, so in the same, I guess, idea of the 90s and being not so much edgy, I, I mean, I try to collect everything from chaos. You know, I grab whatever evil Ernie I can. Um, Lynch Mob, I hope that has to do with the band, because I know chaos did that a lot. Uh, obviously, I could tell if it was the insane clown posse one. But Lynch Mob is cool. And, uh, you know, this is number one. This is actual chaos comics. I'm still buying the dynamites when I see them and stuff. And then Ant, this is uh, Mario Gully, but the image stuff was a little bit uh, less risque. It just looks like an image comic now. You know, I'd, I prefer you, you know, you go the full, um, the full level of maturity if you're, you know, if you were doing it before rather than just look like everything else, but picked it up anyway there. Whenever I can get full runs, or a, a decent amount of a book, I do that. So Poison Elves and Drew Hayes. And I really liked, especially flipping through this, I really liked the art in this. So what did I get? I got one, two, three, four, 
So I got five issues of Poison Elves. This is not like the first series or anything, um, but uh, I think it looked pretty cool. I've never actually read any Poison Elves, so um, excited to get into this. And it, you know, it has that. It has that uh, feel before people were afraid to put a lot of word, you know, to put so many words in comics. They were, or they were less afraid of it. I mean, uh, and to be honest, it makes it look not that good, but. We'll see how he does in it. So it looked cool to me, sort of like a elf, uh, you know, elf quest feeling sort of stuff from Sirius. Uh, and the covers are beautiful, so uh, these can easily just be put up on a wall or something like that. And they cost me ten cents each, so you just do it. Here's a uh, another book where I got a little bit of a run. So what do I have here? Number one, two, three, and four. This is Wildflower from Dogstar Press. I don't know a lot about Dogstar Press. Uh, more black and white stuff. Um, not heavy on the blacks, though. So it, it does look a little sparse. But again, like I just said, 10 cents each. The covers are pretty, uh, are pretty nice. And, um, and I like to grab stuff like this, especially if it's older. And it's a full run. This one is from, this is actually not even, uh, not even very old. It's not even 80s. It's from 90, 1998. So we'll see. Looks 1998. And probably the only time I'd grab a bunch of old image stuff, to be honest, except I just can't tell it apart most of the time, like a brigade or whatever. But I don't hate it. So I grab it when it looks interesting to me. And that's what I got here. So, I mean, you already know what's going to be inside of this. So I like Chapel just for its um, connection to Spawn, even though it's, it's Liefeld and um, a Liefeld creation, you know, that looks just like an image comic, exactly like you would think it would be. And that's a Liefeld cover too, for sure. Except uh, I guess people started making fun of his pouches already. Um, I know that's not image, but, you know, Max had a little run in IDW and this was 10 cents, so I grabbed it. Uh, Spirit of the Tau. Um, I just remember really being into the tenth. Um, not like I could buy it or anything, but the tenth and Creech is probably like a third wave, fourth wave image book in the '90s, and I just you know they were heavily, heavily uh, marketed. And naturally, as a kid, uh, I couldn't afford them. So I'm not. I haven't even read the Creech um, books or the tenth books. I have. I do have the first couple. So, um, yeah, I mean, to be honest, it looks like a generic sort of image book of the late 90s a little more, more like, um, like Fathom, like Michael Turner art kind of thing. But uh, I like comic books, so I bought them. They probably had 50 issues of Cyber Force number two and then no Cyber Force three, four, five, or one or anything like that. So uh, I just took one off their hands. Why not? If I see Savage Dragon, um, you know, I've talked online to people that are big Savage Dragon fans, so I just, you know, I grabbed him, I saw him, and I grabbed him. Although, that's interesting. Is this like a Vanguard comic on this side? Oh, it's one of them double comics. So, a few Savage Dragons, and for whatever reason, the Mars Attack stuff grabs me. It's just so silly, but... Uh, it, <laughs> I mean, you know, there's a review out there for my Mars Attacks versus uh, uh, the, uh, John Carter. So these were 10 cents. Savage Dragon again, Mars Attacks image. Um, Dark Child's number one. I mean, this is just the, this is actually the art wasn't even that good when I flipped through it, but um, you know what you're getting there. So I'll probably end up reading it. it looks sort of like. Uh, which played precursor kind of thing. I don't know much about it. And uh, I just wanted to grab some Shadowhawks. I sort of liked, like we all like the concept of Shadowhawk, even though he's not near as popular as a lot of the other image stuff, but like that character where you didn't know his secret identity, that's pretty cool. So grab those. Let's see what we have next. Um, I've decided to be interested in, um, well, that's Judge Dredd, and it was just a little bit older comic, and 
a bunch of YouTube channels I watch are Judge Dread guys. So when I just grabbed it, so why not? Um, I've decided I was going to be into the worlds of the Predator and Alien and Terminator. I'm, I am anyway, but um, maybe start watching those movies and you know grabbing comics here and there. So you know this is Batman versus Predator. It's actually a nice cover. One of those crazy crossovers they did. I I'd actually love. There's actually a lot of um, hope, I think, in uh, in a good writer doing Batman versus Predator. If you think about it, obviously, if Batman had all of his all of his um, his trinkets and stuff, then it may not be that good. Or I mean, if Predator showed up in a spaceship too. So I mean, it depends. But I mean, that's like opportunity for a good book. There's some a just to grab the aliens. I actually grabbed two of those. So just grab the aliens and predators, predator stuff that I found. I mean, that just looks silly, right? Predator versus Magnus robot fighter, but why not? All right, why not? I wish I had number two because a two issue series would have been uh, would have been easy to read for me. Let's see these. So I grab anything to do with um, music or musicians, especially the hip hop stuff. A while ago, Ghost Face or hip hop and metal stuff. A while ago, uh, Ghost Face Killer did something with uh, Black Mass Studios. I have a couple of these, but I saw them there. So this is three, five. Bought two of this one featuring Ghost Face. I think I have one and two. So um, that was five, and there's three. So that's pretty cool. And then this this stack is um somewhat recent books that just ended up in their dollar bin which you know when you fill the thing turned into a 10 cent bin for labor day and uh you know these are just recent books from action lab and scout and stuff but um got them for cheap something i never tried right so you'll see like here's voracious one and two from action lab comics uh no angel so i don't even know if these are good or if they're if they just happened in there they didn't want to hold back issues anymore uh oblivion from Scout Comics, you know, I kept my eye on that. Uh, Tinkers of the Wasteland. Um, it's from Scout. Do little, little black and white work from there. Um, this is from Action Lab, but I really liked when I opened this. It's a three-color book, right? So um, it'll be interesting as, as I'm reading this uh, to see how that art affects the feeling of the book. But like you see a lot of detail in there. And um, whenever someone decides to do three killer books, there's a couple of those from Alterna. Uh, it, can, uh, it can really decide and affect the story uh, very strong, in a very strong manner. Let's see if we can get the creator since we flip through here so much. Uh, looks like it is. Uh, Jason Martin and, oh no, well, who knows who the creators are. We're not going to deal with that now. Uh, James, why not art? Well, okay. Uh, Man of God, um, cover and title just pulled me out and never heard of the, never heard of this uh, publisher, Pinwheel Press. Uh, black and white inside, though. Uh, looked pretty cool when I flipped through it. And, hey, if you think you might want it, you just put it in the box. I think I might want it. Let's put it in the box. That's what you do. Um, I grab uh, all the distant soils uh, from Colleen Doran. I actually just got... It's funny, because there's a party... You've got a double there. There's a party that's like, oh, man, you know, these ended up in the in the dollar bins or the cheap bins, you know. But I mean, you still support the artists and the uh, and the writers that you like, right? I mean, I do. So Colleen Duran, for example, I just bought something by her and Neil Gaiman, a real nice book, real cool book. So I've read some of these. Some of them are a little stuck in the 80s, the earlier ones I have. Um, these still look cool, black and white inside. And I enjoy that, I like the covers too. So a lot more detail in this one. So, so these are fun. I always grab a distant soil when I can. Try not to grab doubles, but that's impossible. Um, something else I always get are anything from Earth 295 with characters from Earth 295. So that means 
Earth 295 is uh, the Age of Apocalypse world. So Blink is from the Age of Apocalypse world. I haven't read Exiles yet, except for maybe the, I read like maybe the first five only. But I have the vast majority of the run. So I don't even know if those are doubles. I didn't feel like checking. Um, I remember way back when I got my, you know, my dad and my stepmom and my stepsisters in the comics. And the girls liked the girl. Um, they were actually a lot better at drawing and stuff than I was. So they, you know, they were easily, they were easy to get into comics. My stepmom was into Lady Death. My dad liked Evil Ernie. That's probably why I collect Chaos Comics now. Um, one of my stepsisters collected She, and I don't feel like I saw She very much lately in dollar bins, but I've seen a, a, a decent group of them here, stuff from the 90s. And, you know, to be honest, it wasn't as gratuitous, but it was clearly that bad girl's phase. But uh, it looks cool, and uh, these still actually look really good, especially coloring some of the, um, some of the fight scenes. So I went uh, ahead and grabbed them a lot more. You know, that one's a very wordy one, but you get some uh, interesting splash page kind of art. Uh, see, that's like almost a book, so I don't, I don't really mind that. So why not? Do your thing. If all comics were like that, I wouldn't be into it. But actually, uh, these are all like that. So maybe I will get tired of it. Who knows? Uh, well, she's nude there. Premiere issue from... Crusade comics. See, this one must be a little bit newer. Way of the Warrior. Oh, this is from 97. This is about the same about the same time, but it looks like, you know, I get to know the characters or something. I remember owning this one. You know, Cyblade had her moment. Oh, that's funny. I remember this. I remember this scene. I might still have this. Cerberus comes in. I actually remember that. So, uh, that's cool. That's a few She comics I saw, so... I guess now I collect she, but not too into it, I guess. <laughs> not too intensely. Um, this is a Warren Ellis stack. Uh, or not Warren Ellis. This one is Garth Ennis. Uh, the reason that's not Garth Ennis, it's a Claremont book, but it had um, Hitman in it. That's a, a Garth Ennis creation, so I went ahead and grabbed it. Um, Garth Ennis, of course, wrote for Max, too, but I put, you know, instead of putting it with those other Max titles, this is some of his war stuff. Um, Caliban look cool. Uh, I got a nice little run, but I missed number one. I didn't see number one there. So that's something I can look out for in other, in other dollar bins. I wouldn't mind paying a dollar for that. Uh, you know, Garth Ennis is pretty, he's very prolific. And the fact is, is that he's, a lot of his stuff is still really, really good and real fun to read, even though it never got popular. And I'm going to show you Warren Ellis is the same way. So um, if I can get them for 10 cents, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick them up. There's a lot more war stories. That's something I've never gotten into with Garth Ennis, so I'm excited to do that. Then I had a cool run. I found six red teams from Garth Ennis, so grabbed every single one of those. Number three, four, five, six. And then there's a decent amount of war stuff, and then Jimmy's Bastards there, right? So Jimmy's Bastards is a pretty, pretty popular book of his. And I only found one, but I grabbed it anyway. Um, and, you know, see, some of those companies he has to be muted by, right? Can't, can't be the crazy Garth Ennis he really is. And um, same with Warren Ellis. Uh, one of the best newsletters to follow is Warren Ellis's. So Wolfskin, I had some of these. It's funny because Warren Ellis does some somewhat edgy stuff on Avatar, but he's also spawned a lot of the a lot of the kind of writer that comics gate people don't like so i've always thought that was interesting about him because i was like do you guys hate kelly sue have you obviously you've read his work right because some of it's um some of it's uh kind of thing that those other weirdos would like you know but i love warren ellis and everyone should go watch castlevania because that show's awesome um, we'll see about how these are. I've never read, I've actually never read any of that stuff, so. Um, and then what happens? Well, you go to these dollar bins. I'm more of an indie guy and stuff, but God forbid you don't find a few of the big two old stuff that you want. Executioner's Song was one of my big, I actually have that, but I think it's Polybag maybe. It's one of my big, um, series I was trying to collect as a kid. 
uh, of course, you can always afford it. So I will just grab Executioner's Song as I see him. Um, here's some older or newer Ravages, which is pretty cool because you see a lot of Ravage there. This is, uh, I also collect 2099 World. I forget which Earth that is, but uh, I grab those whenever I can. So Punisher and then, of course, Dr. Doom. And these uh, later issue ones are sometimes harder to find. I mean, Dr. Doom 1 through 15 is really easy to find in all kinds of dollar bins. But after that, starts getting just a little bit harder and um, most people think Doctor Doom was the best uh, of the 2099 books. I, I like them all for what they are. They're just like a cool thing to have and 2099 is coming back anyway so I'll probably skip those and wait for them to show up in the, in the dollar bins too because I'm trying not to spend so much damn money on comics. And X-Men 2099 that I didn't have and I think I might have had that but you know any kid would love a Spider-Man 2099 versus Ghost Rider 2099. I know I did. So if I have that doubled up, I will. I will give it away. And it was pretty cool because a lot of, you know, issues of the last year, year and a half, were in there. So this is not the cover that I loved. I mean, I love this cover too, but there was that one where um, I think Doctor Strange is wearing the Galactus helmet or something. But, hey, I just went ahead and picked these up. So there's some War of the Realms stuff there. Avengers, here's a War of the Realms book. I think I have 19 or 20 or something like that. That was just a cover by. I thought that cover looked cool. Let's find out who did it so we can give them credit. Um, this is Lemire's Run, and it's the Apocalypse Wars. Uh, Humberto Ramos is the penciler. And it's Ramos and Delgado's cover. So they did the interiors and that cover. The Apocalypse Wars, that sounds cool. Then, you know, I just grab Ghost Rider stuff. Um, this is actually pinups of those Marvel. I grabbed this immediately as soon as I saw it because these are the cards that Marvel Masterpieces, but this is the comic of them. So they're even, you know, bigger paintings. So this is even better than having the cards. I remember all of these. Uh, and so to get that artwork is for a dime. If you try to get those cards online, they're probably like 20 bucks or something like that. Then some old Ghost Riders. I actually got a double here. Mephisto. Um, this is good because I think I needed this. Uh, if, this is a, if this is that run where they're together, that's a double. I'll give that away. That's the new Ghost Rider. And then um, a bunch of those X-Men, Uncanny X-Men. I, you know, I tried skipping it. This is Brisson's run just before Rosenberg's. That's just before the one that uh, Hickman's doing now, right? So, um, and, you know, it also, it's also a Earth-295 guy. There's X-Man right there. So, you know, there were mixed feelings on it. It wasn't good or bad, most people thought, but I'm going to take anything with, um, with Nate Gray in it, and I'm going to like it. Um, there's Age of X, Age of Apocalypse. I, the only thing I'm missing from there, and I'm just not going to go look for it because I see him all the time, is Gambit and the Externals. I don't know what happened to my four issues. I must have lent them out or something never saw them again. Um, I think I owned that, but it was 10 cents, so whatever. And Doctor Strange versus Punisher, that's just fun. I think I showed it last time. I got a, I got a box and I had number one, so that's number two. I didn't go check. Hey, just grab some of the Night Thrashers that I saw. Tell me that's not cool. Easy, easy to buy that. And I actually own this one, but the cover is torn off and it was this is one of those things, this is one of my comics as, very, as a young kid when I had like five or ten, and I had this one. So now I have it in a little bit better. I don't even know, oh, Marvel UK. I just saw Marvel UK, and I've been curious about it, so I went ahead and grabbed those. And let's cut this short pretty soon here. These are just some older comics. I um, got Strange Days. This is an anthology comic. I got number one and two on eBay months and year, years ago on I was probably Warren Ellis's newsletter that I just mentioned and uh, they had number three there so I went and grabbed that and then these are just some old 80s a lot of black and white stuff um, anything that looked like it was going to be cool or intense this looks silly but I bought it anyway um, I reviewed one of these in this series a while ago this is that 80s stuff where it's basically D a D and d campaign um, but you can find good stories there. It would be like if I just grab random superhero books. You can find them. Um, I had Dragon in the Moon. Hey, there's my dog. Hi, Ellie. 
Um, I had Dragon in the Moon uh, and was reading it, and it was like sort of weird. So too many little boys in underwear. In underwear, uh, but I flipped through this one and it wasn't like that. So I mean, it may have just been me going like that's a little weird, and but it, I shouldn't have. Maybe I made a bigger deal about that than I should have, like I do sometimes with manga. Um, Mage, War Dancer, War Dancer. And um, for some reason, I think I thought this was uh, that Hickman run, and it was just some weird cover, weird uh, alternate cover. And then E-Man, I always grab these first comics. If I see them, I try to anyway. Let's see, what's next, friends? Oh, the... And I think I didn't get any doubles here. I may have no big deal because, again, these were only 10 to 12 cents. Um, so I'm calling this my Alan Moore run. I realize that's not Alan Moore, but it is America's comics, so I'm just going to grab them anyway, but there's top 10. So a bunch of, I mean, America's co best comics. The fact that I'm seeing these in dollar bins is, is just amazing for me. Tomorrow stories, and, and none of these, none of these I... I had, right? So these are all filling runs for a dime. And, um, you know, Alan Moore, Ennis, Alan Moore, Garth Ennis. For me, they're easy choices. I just always grab them crossed. I'm used to that being, um, who, not Garth Ennis. I guess that's Warren Ellis, but I guess Alan Moore wrote it for a while. So uh, I'm excited to find those now because basically everyone I like has written it. This is, um, this is from that 1963 series, but it's like the Heroes preview. Little ash can, so that's cool to have. Uh, and then Tom Strong is one of his best. I mean, he's most known for Promethea, and I think Promethea is about the only one of America's best comics that you won't see or you'll rarely see in the dollar bins. Um, so this one, the next one I'm going to show you is a little sad. I only got one, two more piles here. It's a little sad, but, you know, it's a lot of times these Aftershock comics do grab me, I have to admit. And I'm like, oh, that looks pretty cool. But I just see s somehow they just so many just end up in dollar bins, you know. And, um, and uh, you know, I'm the first to tell you that sucks. But, uh, well, what can you do, right? And so that's, how, that's why I grabbed them. <laughs> so brilliant trash. This is all Aftershock. Relay, Replica. You know, when I worked at, um, uh, when I worked for Zappos, it was always an issue, right? Because we would sell a bunch of brands, but certain brands would not let you sell on our discount site, 6pm.com. And I think that's what sometimes comic books have to do. They'd be like, you cannot, these cannot appear in our dollar bins. But it's hard to enforce that. It's easy if you see a bunch of shoes or you can sort of tell they're from Zappos or something and it's happening. But, you know, if people expect, and that's what happened here, I expect these to go to the dollar bin, then I'm just going to wait for them because I like Aftershock. But it's hard to, I can support it. I do buy a lot of Aftershock new, but it's hard to like go, you know, they're, I know they're going to end up there, you know, for the most part. I may have to pay cover price a few times. Um, this is from Under the Mountains. This, you know, didn't look like a standard... Um, standard superhero sci-fi kind of thing so I grabbed it I'm not familiar with the writer I'm missing number three there but this is just some random image I grabbed Jeff Lemire Plutona Citizen Jack I just see it there a lot so I grabbed it I love Descender I've already read this in trade but I grabbed it anyway Th same thing with Extremity and then is, these are just so hard to know by the cover if you owned them and I didn't want to keep checking so grab some God is Dead from Hickman anyway guys that's all I got uh, 10 cents each. This was a pretty fun haul. I do love to crate dig. I wish uh, you could still do that with records. You guys have a great day. Thank you for watching.